Hey everyone, it's Marie and welcome back to my channel. Today I am making just a fun little card. I was in my craft room playing around looking at my um, supplies and I found a stencil from scrapbook.com which is a honeycomb design and I thought it would be really fun to make just a really cute bee themed card. So I'm going to do a little ink blending here to get started. I am using some orange cream ink from scrapbook.com and I'm just blending it onto my my background. I'm taking my time and trying to get a nice smooth blend. Sometimes you might get a little bit of those marks from your blending foam um, and a lot of times as you keep blending your ink out it will kind of soften out and blend out. So I like to take my ink off to the side on my glass mat um, and then I like to come onto my paper with small circular motions um, and really lightly. I'm not pushing down really hard so that I can get that ink to kind of blend out. Now sometimes with ink blending if you want to go ahead and practice on a piece of scrap paper first to see what it looks like, get the hang of blending onto your paper, um, it's always good to practice on a piece of scrap paper before you bring it to your card front. Now my card front that I'm using is a pre-cut card front from scrapbook.com. It's one of their Nina um, card flats. And I have to say I really like getting these pre-cut card flats because I have them in a little basket off to the side of my workspace and I can just grab one and start building a card front. So I've got all of the orange cream ink on there that I want and now I'm going to add my honeycomb stencil. So when I add my card fronts to my stencils, I like to tape them onto my stencil from the back side. That way it will keep my stencil in place. And when I pull that tape off, I'm pulling it off from the back side. So even if it tears a little bit, um, it's going to be on the back and it's not going to ruin my card front. So after the orange cream ink, I'm coming in with some rubber ducky and this is a really bright yellow. I've kind of found that I really like this yellow color of ink. It goes really well if you want to make a rainbow background, just add it with some pink and some um, cyan or light blue and you can get a really great um, rainbow background and it's just a really bright yellow that goes well with a lot of other color combinations. So I'm taking some of this yellow, I'm blending right over that orange cream. That's going to help kind of blend some of those colors together and I'm also blending it out farther than the orange so that I get some of that orange turning into yellow and I'm also going to get that honeycomb design going on my card background. So I have a Nuvo Midas Touch glitter pen here and I'm just trying to get a little bit of that glitter flowing and then I'm using my cap to flick on some glitter splatters or flecks onto my background. I wanted a little bit of gold shine on this background so this is a great way to add some, sh uh, some subtle sparkle and shine. I learned this little cap flicking trick from my friend Maria Willis over at Card Bomb. So go ahead and check her out. She's got lots of great tutorials and videos um, and she is insanely talented. So go check her out, Maria Willis at Card Bomb. So once I've got a lot of those little um, gold speckled um, just splattered on my background, uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull off my stencil. Now splattering before I pulled off my stencil helped me to make sure no splatters were on where those honeycomb designs were and I love the way this background turned out. It's really kind of subtle but it's got that honeycomb design on there and a bright pop of orange and yellow. So I'm setting that aside so it can dry and I'm pulling out one of my ancient stamp sets. This one is Bugs and Kisses from Lawn Fawn. You can see a few of my stamps there are yellowing a little bit. It doesn't hurt the stamp at all. They've just kind of discolored. They still stamp perfectly fine. But this is the only stamp set that I had that had little cute bees in it. So I had to pull this out and stamp out some of these bees because you can't make a bee card without having actual bees on there. Um, I think it's really fun. My kids lately have been really into learning about honeybees. Um, and so we've been reading books and watching videos about honeybees and beekeepers and it's really fascinating so I've kind of caught the bug as well and I so I really loved this little bee themed card. 
So I've got my little bees stamped out. I colored them, used the dies to cut them out. They're off to the side, and I'm going to kind of build a custom sentiment here. I didn't have any bee sentiments that I really wanted to put on this card, so I went ahead and I cut out the word bee with some of Altenew's bold alpha dies, and I'm using some sentiments from this Concord and Ninth stamp set. I think it's called You Are Here. And I'm just going to build my own custom sentiment. If I don't have a sentiment that I want to put on a card, sometimes I'll just go ahead and look through my stamp sets and find different words and sentiments that I can mix and match to build what I'm going for. So if you don't have something right on hand, you have a sentiment in mind that you really want to put on a card, just go back and see what stamp sets you can mix and match to create what you are looking for. I think it's so great that you can mix and match different stamp sets. Um, I try to do it more often. Sometimes um, I get stuck in just grabbing one stamp set, but go ahead and use those stamp sets together. I think it, it just adds to the creativity of your cards. So I'm embossing these sentiments in white. So I've gone ahead, stamped them out with some Versamark ink, and then I brushed, not brushed, I sprinkled on some white embossing powder. Now I'm using a brush to brush away some of that embossing powder that stuck around my sentiment where I didn't want it. And then once I had that cleaned up, I went ahead, hit it with my heat tool, and I embossed those sentiments. So now I have a raised embossed sentiment on my little um, cardstock here, and I'm kind of trying to eyeball where I want this sentiment to go. Um, but before I go ahead and adhere everything down, I'm going to take these little B die cut pieces here and I want to gild the bottom half. So I'm taking some Nouveau glue. This is their large glue pen and you can just use this to dab a little bit of glue onto your projects. I'm just dabbing some on the bottom of these letters here and I'm trying to make sure I have it even so it comes up to the right height so they all look sort of coordinated um, and I'm just dabbing a little bit of glue on here. Now I'm going to go ahead and put gilding flakes on these but I wanted to make sure to mention let your glue get a little tacky before you put your gilded flakes on there. Um, if it's really wet, your gilding flakes will kind of stick to your fingers rather than the cardstock. So if you let it dry a little bit to where it's tacky and not smooshy white or you know smooshy and wet um, you're gonna get your gilded flakes to stick a lot better so already you can kind of see um, it's sticking to my fingers more than to the cardstock so I should have let my glue dry just a little bit more and if that makes you a little bit nervous of not knowing when to put on your gilding flakes um, go ahead and try it on a piece of scrap paper first um, so that you can kind of get the feel of it I did have to let that sit for a little bit, let it dry before I came back and kind of brushed off the extra crumbs. Um, but even if you put your gilded flakes on before that glue is completely tacky, you can leave your gilded flakes, come back to it later, and then just use your finger to burnish it down and brush away any of those crumbs. So now that my letters are all gilded, I'm going to go ahead and adhere them down. I'm using a little bit of Nouveau Deluxe Liquid Glue, um, putting it on the back of my letters here, and I'm just going ahead and lining them up. I'm eyeballing it, but if you really want to be precise with your die cut letters, you can use a ruler um, and make sure that they are completely straight. I'm also adding my sentiment here with a little bit of glue um, that always is glued down and then the rest of the sentiment I'm popping up with some foam circles. Now these are scrapbook.com foam circles. I really love that they have different shapes and sizes of adhesive so that you can use them with whatever project you're doing. After I've got my sentiment all done, I'm going to start adding my bees. And I really loved this adhesive. I picked these little circles for this reason, that I can add one little um, circle of foam behind each bee and pop them up. Um, I've popped up most of them. The little bee there that's kind of behind that bottom sentiment, I'm going to glue down. But the rest are popped up with foam adhesive. And a few of these bees, I've even let them kind of hang off the side. Because my card front is cut a little bit smaller than my card base. Um, even with them hanging off the side, they're going to still be on the card base itself. And it's still going to fit into an envelope. 
So I'm getting some of my scrapbook.com foam adhesive. There's, this is their two inch wide adhesive. And I love to kind of cut this down into longer strips and then add it to the back of my card fronts so I can mount it on my card bases. And that just pops up that front sentiment, front, front card panel a little bit on my card. Now that's going to finish today's card. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure you give a like, um, click that thumbs up, make sure you comment. I'd love to hear any questions or comments you have. Subscribe, tap the bell for notifications, share, just do all the things. Thanks for stopping by today, guys. I'll catch you next time. Bye.